we're not doing a VCR today. Instead, we're going to do a teardown of Valve Index VR headset. Uh, but not this one, because this one's in good working order and I want to keep it that way. I got some others that were uh, supposedly parts only. And it comes with just the minimum amount of stuff, because probably all the other bits on it were usable. And that an unknown fault. And another one with an unknown fault. And we'll try them out to see what see if we can determine what is the problem with these and then take them apart so we can see what's in there since I have not taken one apart before and I want to know what's inside um, but because I don't have another cable we're gonna have to take the cable from this one test these but I want to check that this works properly with the computer first because you always have to test that everything you're going to use to test if something works does work itself Otherwise you're going to get in trouble because you'll find you're trying to get something to work when the piece of equipment you're using to test it is the thing that's at fault. That's just a... F anyway, the other thing that's happened is while testing this, we might want to test some other thing. I got Tundra trackers. So the Vive ones, 3.0 trackers, fairly popular and common. But there's another company, Tundra and supposedly these have longer battery life than these five ones so i want to test that they're also quite nice and small which is interesting so i've got three of those they don't come with um like usb cables or anything but they come with the steam vr dongles i've put dots on the ends after pairing them so one two and three useful way of knowing these really good pens that you can use for writing on metal and glass and other surfaces because it's a paint type of ink yeah the thing that's really interesting about these is the tripod thread screw on the bottom is on its own little plate that you can remove and then you get these other plates with straps and things what a great idea I what size that screw is to put those on came with some screws I guess they're the same yeah I guess it's just extra ones in case you lose them oh that's interesting that so yeah look what's under there under the plate made in China designed with love Green Bay Wisconsin Built in China, used on Earth for now. And there's an IO expansion connector, which is a little flex PCB ribbon thing. Wow, that's quite exciting. And then we put that on instead. I think I got that as it might go around my foot. I've got two of those straps. I've already gone off track with the video. Oh well. Don't worry, we'll do a VCR next week. We'll just do a little, I'll get the other strap set up, then we'll get this headset set up, we'll try it briefly, prove that everything works, then we'll try out these ones. That's our program for today, two and three can be the foot ones. So instead of wasting your time, we'll come back once it's up and running. We can see up there, the trackers come up with their own icon on the Steam VR Compositeur, and they seem to work fine. Can move around, legs, and yeah, that's good. Although I thought we were tearing down headsets, not reviewing trackers. But there's one thing that is a bit dodgy with these trackers I notice when you plug the power cable in to charge them up it will it turns on the tracker so if you've got the the dongle plugged into the computer and your computer's on then it's going to start up Steam VR which is quite annoying and I don't know why you'd want to have that there are sheep there are many hmm 
Yes, if you've got the tracking on, then you the walk animation doesn't play, so you've got to walk yourself or override it. So there you go. Maybe it's a good idea to get Tundra trackers if you can deal with them powering on when you go to charge them, which seems kind of weird. I'll have to report back later on with what the battery life is like on them. It seems like they don't report battery life on the overlay thing. That's quite annoying. On here. Yeah, on here. See, normally it would show the tracker um, battery levels, but I guess they don't support reporting battery life. That's weird. That's not what we want, is it? Does this thing report it? Nope. See there? Battery life reported by the controllers. Oh, you can't see the pop-up. Anyway, the, the Tundra ones don't report it. So that's a bit disappointing. Oh well, maybe the Vive ones are better after all. I don't know, we're to see what the battery life is like, but it'll be really nice if it would actually tell you that, because then... Yeah, anyway, let's take apart some headsets. We've proven that the cable and the computer set up right for this. So let's go do that. Yeah, so it was a bit disappointing and unexpected that the battery life remaining is not reported to the computer from these things. Oh well, they seem to track all right in that very limited test. Anyway, we've got to get the cable off of this. I've never taken a cable off of Index headset before because I've never needed to replace one. And I remember hearing from someone who did that, that getting that thing off is very difficult. Maybe we don't need to get it off because we can just slide the cable through enough so it's got some length because yeah we're not permanently working and how do you get that out okay like that i guess okay there you go it just kind of rips out by pulling the cable really hard pulling the cable not to the connector because you can't get to it but dodgy yeah, this is warm. Interested, because that block at the other end here, where it splits from the one cable into this one that then turns into the three connectors power, USB and display port. I'm pretty sure that there has got line drivers in it for the um, like driving this long cable. And then presumably in the headset is the receivers, not in there, because that's probably too small, although that is warm, so maybe there is a line receiver thing in there. Anyway, let's connect it up to this one and see what happens, whether it will switch on or not. I guess that's plugged in. Blue lights came on. It's actually should have had the um, USB device viewer thing open so that we could see the devices coming up when we powered it on. So is it there? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, so there's the camera on the USB 3 port and then this is the USB 2 side here which has got all the bits and pieces on it index H things got the microphone which is yeah the index is interesting because it doesn't use for the speakers the headphones that are on it which connect onto there and the other side it doesn't have any audio USB audio device for that, it uses the, the display port embedded audio. So we'll start up Steam VR by putting that on and we'll see if this does anything. Hmm. Okay, it seems to be fine. Weird. So this is not bung after all. I thought we we're buying a dead thing, but according to my eyes looking at it, Everything seems to be fine. Like it's tracking okay. The picture looks fine. Though um, not very easy for you to see. It's weird. Maybe the, I don't know, maybe the microphone in it doesn't work. Or the speakers, because that's the only thing that we're not testing right now, isn't it? Or maybe the cameras in it don't work. Although I never used them in the first place, so. There you go, though it has come up with a little window saying it needs a firmware update. I suppose it will run that while we're here. It says, yeah, I can't capture the window because it's a little thing. It just says to update your device, Steve, you need to quit any running applications you want to continue. And it 
updates. A tracking device update. Ah, so that stuff has turned itself off and on again in the process. Maybe it's got a fault that doesn't show up for a while. You never know. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's a little bit surprising because I thought it was going to be dead in some way, like not show up in Windows or one screen would be out or have lines on it or weird colors or something, but it seems fine. Success. Okay, it updated itself. Oh, well, here we go. The bits are coming back online now. And yeah, it's working. I was a quick try turning on the cameras to see if that does anything. Oh, you gotta restart Steam VR for that. Okay, really like restarting stuff. Yes, yeah, so now if we open up the the view thing, now we can see that yeah, the cameras are working. It's a really weird effect, but yeah, it's only when you're Oh, like exceeding the boundary, which, yeah, you can see the boundary over there. Flickery monitor over there, wow. Oh well, I guess it's fine, and we'll test the other one. Strange. So that's a working thing, or it has a problem that we've not yet discovered. Okay, we'll try the other one, see if that works. If not, we'll take it apart, and if it does, then I guess we'll take it apart anyway. Okay, let's power it on, see if something happens. Did only some of it turn on? Only the camera showed up, but no other devices do. So maybe this is dead. Oh, wait a minute, it just gave me a notification that the microphone had been installed. Well, it seems to work as well. Oh, look, there you go. There's the update thing. You can capture it. Yes, yeah, so this one needs an update as well. But what I was looking for was this thing to show that, yeah, this one works as well. And there are the cameras working. Oh, look at that. It shows an actual thing on the hands. That must be what that setting was. Because I chose on here camera show camera on controller. Okay, well that's what that means then. It means that the actual view from the camera. That's nice. Anyway, weirdly it looked like these are fine, so we'll just take this one apart for fun because. That's what we're doing, right? We should get that thing out again. So I guess if you want some cheap things, your mileage may vary. Go on the Tundra website and buy some of their supposedly not working parts only Valve Index headsets. Because it seemed like they work. $30 each. I think that's what it was. But they don't come with all the other stuff, so unless you've got this and some cables and the power supply, yeah, it's not going to be very useful at a minimum. And then you still need the headband and the speakers. And for the amount they sell those parts for, you might as well just buy one that is known to work in the first place. So I don't know what to do to take this apart, because I've not done it before. We'll just play around. I guess you can pull that off. Oh, look. There is, I did notice that this, the IPD adjustment, which moves the lenses further apart to suit your eye distance, that unscrews, which is nice, that's a lot nicer than the reverb, the G2 one. You can see there is the adjuster for bringing the, this part further or closer to your head. We need to undo those screws there, and then we put this knob back on, because it needs to push in, and there you go. So that brings the eyes, but like the lens is closer to your eyes, so you can have it adjusted to where glasses or so that your eyeballs are touching that, and then you get a really nice wide field of view, assuming your eyes are capable of focusing that close. There, the like presence detector, little IR, LED, and a receiver, 
so that it can tell when your face is in this thing and turns on the screens. Yeah, so those will be wires going to the earphones that come out on these little pins. That's a much nicer setup than the uh, G2, isn't it? Because that G2 just had wires going through the hinge part here and it was quite a hassle to disconnect those when changing the headband. So the, the cover that comes on it, comes with it, there's little magnets in there that go into these screws. I don't know if those screws are also holding something together. Maybe it is holding this front vent part. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so there's a USB connector there, USB 3, and you, know, you can make your own bits and pieces to go there, or you can put extra dongles there for your trackers, or plug the Vive facial tracker into there, or your eye tracking setup. Or one of those fan things that you can blow all the juice out of your eyes. Not sure that's a good idea, but anyway, it exists. Okay, so I guess the next step is to take these ones off. Oh yeah, there's heaps, heaps of screws more under there. Some ribbon, like the micro coax. I wonder if that's coming from that connector up there. That would be exciting. And it looks like those are the connections to the displays, potentially. Or maybe it's those. I don't know, why would they be, they look like the display connectors more than those. Yeah, those there are probably the connectors to all of the photo diodes. You can see, well I guess you can't see, yeah there, there are photo diodes all over the front of this thing and the sides, just like there is on all over the controllers, you can see. little dots there and then all the way along this part here photodiodes and similarly on the trackers everywhere there's an indent there are photodiodes and presumably that's the same thing on this although they must have used an IR translucent or transmissive an IR transparent housing here so you can't see where they are but they'll be in there on all these different angled surfaces and the reason for that is for it to pick up the light that, the infrared light that is emitted from the base stations or lighthouses so that the stuff can understand where it is in the 3D space by looking at the timing signals in that IR beam. Very good system, it means that all different trackers and controllers and headsets can just exist in the same environment and not need to be independently calibrated or know what they're looking at and can get some millimeter tracking accuracy in good conditions yes yeah, so i'm pretty sure that's what those cables will be for and these ones down here will be for the displays and that there that's probably the cameras those two thingies look there's more photodiodes on there three there there's there along there and on the top so depending on wherever you're standing you still has a good view of the base stations the lighthouses which of you are not aware are these things it looks like a pir sensor it's not a pir sensor although it does still involve infrared it's an infrared emitter it has a motor inside there and some mirrors and special lenses which create a fan shape of IR light which sweeps across the room in multiple directions and it has various sync pulses and things like encoded into that light and they're expensive and delicate because of the moving parts and the very precision alignment that's required because yeah, an extremely small change in alignment of this thing when you're meters away from it is a very big difference in distance like of where the beam is at a certain part of its sweep okay let's see if we can pull this off i think we got all the screws and i think we're gonna have to undo these cables otherwise we're gonna rip them off lift up the little clippies Probably written on those QR codes what these things are. 
Something is still holding it. Oh, it's the screw that I haven't undone yet, isn't it? Is it one on the other side too? No. Ah, oh, there's some tape or something else there. Ah, oh, yeah, little bit of foam tape kind of stuff. Oh yeah, the cable, <laughs> the camera's got unplugged. Yeah, so that was what was happening. So the, this less number of ways plugs cables went to this front part and the more number of ways cables go to the rest because there must be more sensors around here than there are on the front and you know, these cables here from the bottom did go to these cameras and that's yeah, it looks like they just get pushed on so they don't have any complicated bracket things like the reverb g2 ones did if we can have a look at a photo diode I don't really want to destroy this so much now because it seems like it works fine. So it's interesting, there's little junction thingies. Oh, there's some components on it. There's like a buffer for the signal, maybe a little square bits. That's a really complicated flex PCB assembly. And it must be mirrored. They must have made it and mirrored that mirrored the design. So it would go so that it would create both sides. Guess how that was out of frame anyway. Yeah, so it looks like there's micro coax connected cables there going up to the top where the like main signal comes in. I wonder what we take off next. There are some screws out on the edges there. Oh look you can see how the IPD adjustment works. When you turn slide that along it rotates this like impeller looking thing and then it's got these things riding on it and that just pushes the lenses around it's quite simple and effective there's various springs there so that I guess that helps you with moving it yes yeah well, that spring working against that maybe that's to remove backlash on the gears I don't really know how important that is, but there it is. And somewhere there would be a way of measuring what the IPD is set to, which I've not seen yet. I remember in the G2 there was a little variable resistor, like sliding type. I suppose what we need to do is turn this thing back on and then get the thermal camera out and look at what gets hot in this, because yeah, that's been a concern of people is how hot it gets when running the index. I'm guessing it's the display process of board or something. So plug those back in. I guess it can just work without the front or do we need that? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Now that I've turned off the base stations. Oh, now we get to plug this in in a different way because it's lost its um, deep valley that you plug it into switch that back on get out thermal camera yeah so that's all up and running again so we'll have a look at it and see what's warming up I wonder if maybe the problem is it can't go into the higher f um, refresh rate modes is that possible anything's possible mm, so there's definitely something hot up there And not a lot going on over there. Try and align this. It's all working. Amazing. I thought we were buying duds. So let's see. Now what have we got here? That guy gets hot. Which is... I don't know, some kind of thing that I can't read the part number on. What else looks particularly warm? So that thing there sitting at about 47 degrees this thermal camera is old and ruined so it doesn't give you an accurate temperature above around 50 degrees that's why i have it because it was being thrown out because of that and yes yeah, so that's 40 that one over there was 47. So that, there's a microchip part that was a little microcontroller that there's a nouveau ton so that's probably the like line driver receiver thing there on the display port that thing there is not particularly hot which is a etron tech 
I'm going to have to look some of these up. There's a VLI thingy down there. I'm guessing it's just this stuff here that's hot. Which you can see is really warm in that area. Well, not that warm. 42. Even that cable there is warm. That cable is the speakers. I wonder if it's the... Um... Oh, yeah. See, there's four inductors there. Maybe that's the like a class D amp for the driving the speakers. Yeah, so it could just be all the audio stuff. We're gonna have to pull this board out and look on the other side. There's also this thing down here. There'll be a USB 3 hub chip somewhere. Let me get a good close view of this without having to get out the microscope thing. Yeah, so it was that thing there that was hot. We use this piece of equipment to help us find out what the part number is on it. Hmm. Okay, so it's a slim port trademark. ANX 7530. No idea what that means. So it's a it's a low power 4K Ultra HD mobile HD receiver targeted primar primarily for virtual reality headsets. Four lane display port input and dual MIPI outputs. Okay, so that's the thing that does all of the business. So that's receives the display port data and yeah, gets it turns it into MIPI MIPI for driving the displays. Interesting. So what about that thing there is then a Tron Tech. There's a lattice semiconductor FPGA thing. There's a wind bond chip there, so that's probably the ROM that loads into the FPGA. There's some pretty hard out pass play looking stuff over there with diodes. Maybe that's the audio amp. And then we got this thing here. An e-tron tech. A 3D sensing IC. Oh, there you go. 3D sensing 3D... for AI human robot collaboration. Yeah, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? So it's that. Oh, uh, maybe that's to do with the cameras. Then there's a microchip thing. Then there's that Novo, Novo Tron something or other thing. And there's something down here, and then there's something over here that has a very hard to read part number on it. That's unfortunate. That thing is very hard to identify. Uh, maybe that. It must be a power supply because I'm pretty sure that thing over there is this the um, audio output thing amplifier. So what's that then? An N5284? Bluetooth. Okay, so that's what that is. I guess that makes sense because right there is the aerial. So that should have been kind of obvious. Let's see what that is. An NPC. An audio and enhancing engine and codec wow that's quite exciting something to enhance audio so i guess that's that is it then so that cs thingy there will be uh, something else to do with the audio yeah there you go it's a smart codec with low power audio dsp wow so you got all the good business on there maybe that over there on the end is the the driver the class d driver maybe yeah, class D amplifier. Yeah, it's got all the good bits and pieces in here. Yeah, so perhaps your index getting hot in this corner is of no concern. It's just the audio amplifier. I think the thing you want to be concerned about is this thing over here, which is the actual like display port to displays driver. Nothing else of concern. Yeah, so perhaps when you put it into like 140 hertz mode, video. Oh, it's already on 120 hertz. Okay, so we're already reading it pretty hard. Okay, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Yes, yeah, so I guess that, that's the thing that's going to be cooking. We might check if there's something on the other side of the board here, in that area there, because that whole area seems to be quite warm. All right, let's do that. Uh, we'll shut down this. We don't need it anymore. We'll also do an update still. Okay, so we'll pull that out. That connector out and we'll take this thing apart more another flex here which goes down to this button i'm not really sure what that button does i think that's where it's going something to do with you can turn it on by that i guess 
and then we've got the display connectors with nice differential pairs on them then up here we've got the speaker connectors here left and right and then we've got the special high speed data connector which I think we can get off by lifting up that handle oh yeah look at that and then that should unplug it's not a handle as well, it's like a whole top part which seals it in and shields it up nicely I think there's everything off the that so we can get the board out notice there's another tiny little IC just sitting there I don't know what that is oh look at that there is more business on the back there aha we discovered all the secrets now so there is the an IPD sensing adjustment thing there's an Atmel chip there there's some TI logic something or other there's an NXP is it then there's a bunch more power supply business that's the bottom of the USB connector look at that there's more doofies those must be the class D amplifiers so yeah that's right so that's why that's warm there because it's got these nice little thingies there cranked up yeah and there's like rows of little buffer things so that must be for the like buffering the signals coming back from the photodiodes yeah, nice little unit and then there's that thing up there I wonder if that's the accelerometer perhaps we should try looking up those things even though I just put away the phone yeah well it's another one of those things that's quite hard to read there we go. if we get the angle right we can see it I don't know a 3HHC it's not particularly forthcoming is it now on the back though two little thingies there that are yeah, very reflective is that a T9892A we just have that, a little search of that comes up with Aliexpress for mobile phone yeah it looks like it's meant for headphone type stuff well, there you go I think we've unlocked all the secrets there of this board well most of them and yeah that's the reason why it gets hot up in that corner it's not to do with display processing or anything it's just the audio amplifier display stuff is all done in that little tiny chip there what else can we discover in this ah look at that that's what we discover that's one thing that I was thinking about I remember someone saying that the displays are angled and it made me think that they were like angled like how the those are an angle that like that the bottom of the display would be there and there and I thought that was quite weird because of the the pixels would have to be all rotated but what it actually means is that they're angled in this direction relative to your eyes I guess helps with field of view and the lenses and things although the lenses and the index aren't particularly good especially when you compare them to the likes of G2 which has amazing lenses even though it was made in conjunction with Valve although they've sacrificed the field of view for that maybe that's the key of getting a good picture without any annoying reflections in it just undo these screws and see what happens I think the outer housing is coming off mostly I think that will have to come off as well okay that cable will have to be unthreaded oh that can't come out that way because that gets bigger there something else must happen maybe all this guts has to come out are there any screws on this side not really sure there's some kind of shroud thing around the lenses which goes up the sides there I think that's taped onto the edges of the lenses yeah, this is in really nice shape my my one that I used a lot it's like starting to peel apart here it's because probably because I've been aggressively cleaning the lenses too much because smear them with my eyelids or eyebrows or something every time I use it yeah so that's not going to come off that this way Though I wonder if it will get it out of the way enough we can look at other things it does not look like it to work out what comes off next I'm going to have a look at the board that this cable was going to I wonder if you have to take this stuff off I don't know, worth a go I guess Did that help at all? not really 
I don't know, maybe I will come back if I can work out how to get this thing apart more. All right, so the trick seemed to be unhooking that part from that post, which is its end stop. You see the gear there that moves the assembly in and out. So that's unhooked and those loops from those posts, then it slid out. Yeah, I remember now one of the things that I was interested in looking at was that how people manage to get the um, the eye tracking cables through this and out, like from here, put the ring around it, it's got the camera and the IR LEDs, and then you can get that threaded through, I guess it's just where this cable went, and then you can get it out the front, like out into this part here by cutting that grill open. So I might deal with that one day if I get back to trying to get the eye tracking working on this thing. It may have fallen by the wayside, the wayside, because now I've got this one to play with the big screen beyond and it's pretty amazing. So I'll probably be sticking with that and trying to get eye tracking to work in that thing, in this thing, because it's so small and lightweight and the picture in it's amazing compared to the index and reasonable upgrade on the G2, although this does have reflection issues in the lens, but the lightweight part of this thing is very appealing. Small and lightweight and comfortable. When you put on an index or something else after touching using that, the big screen, it's like your head's got a big brick attached to it. Didn't realize how heavy these things are until you try a light one. Ah, so that little cable that we pulled off, that's actually the microphone. Two microphones there and that button. So there's two microphones in this, even though it comes up as a mono device in Windows. There must be special processing stuff going on for that. I guess that's what one of those audio DSP things was about. One of them will be for the audio output and the other one for the input. So that's interesting. And then we've got all the photo diodes on the flex board all the way around the edge there coming out to two pieces and there's even photo diodes on this part here that sticks up very well organized and down there on the bottom so when you're lying in bed you still receive the infrared beams okay so we got this is pretty much just down to the displays now and so that rubbery thing I guess can peel off and that's just the light turret so it's just a display and then a lens on the front a lens that looks kind of gross and dirty maybe that's what its problem is maybe the lens was uncleanable I don't know I gave it a bit of a wiping before it is probably just probably just a little bit greasy yeah so we're not going to destroy this part because that's still a viable thing that works at the moment till we ruin it more and we'll take this bit off so we want to see what's going on up here there's actually a headphone jack so you can put your own headphones on but or earbuds or whatever but yeah, when I tried doing that it disabled the built-in microphone which was disappointing because the microphone in the index is really good so why would you want to not use that but apparently you can get around that by using an adapter like a headphone extension that doesn't have four contacts and then it would get detected as just a an earphone connection rather than like a headset connection didn't try that yet but that's what i was told there might also be an option in the windows not in windows in the steam vr settings maybe okay so there's a little board up here be blocking the view the whole time it's free it from that and it's taped down so the presence detector head face presence detector there tiny little flex ribbon off of it going onto that connector there some little tiny ICs yes yeah, so this is just a board for getting the signals to the main board I wonder if there was an idea that it makes it easier to replace this connector mm. I guess it's just easier to create the assembly because it's too hard to expose an edge of this to the outside world for the connector but yeah it's a real risk-taking thing to 
take that DisplayPort signal, which is very high speed and sensitive, and bring it through this connector, across a board onto this connector, then through these micro coax through this connector, and then onto the main board. I guess they tested it. Well, you can tell when it's going bad because you'll start seeing sparkly things and miscolored pixels in the display. Yeah, I think that's us. We've made a right mess of this thing. We looked at Tundra Trackers. Tundra Trackers that are nice and small and presumably have a long battery life but have some limitations. They turn on when you plug them into charge, which is annoying, and they don't report their battery remaining to Steam, so that's also annoying. Unless there's a trick that I haven't found out yet, but yeah, initial impressions is mixed. Nice and small though. The board, the stuff, photo diodes, base stations, temperature measurements. Great! Hopefully that was interesting, and maybe we'll continue with the VCRs next time, because I've still got plenty of those.